Okay, hi everybody, thanks for joining me on the sales room sessions. Uh, I'm Mark Cleghorn and basically what we're trying to do is encourage you to actually come on the sales room tour for next week, of course. Um, I've been doing these little mini sessions for the past few uh, weeks through the Academy website, as it were, um, to actually kind of give you some of the kind of the behind the scenes stuff and some advice. I know you all can't get to the UK or on tour, whatever it is, and we fully understand that. And that's why we like to do these kind of uh, live sessions as well for you. And the more you encourage us to do them, the more we'll do, of course, kind of thing with it. So um, anyway, if uh, you want some information on the tour, which I hope hope you do, or if you haven't booked yet, basically, if we just go to the markcleghorn.com web, uh, website forward slash sales dash room, um, I'll just put it into the chat panel for you anyway. And then you can actually click on that link and actually book. It's great. Uh, Loxley's and a few of the other sponsors, Kaleidoscope and 3XM, have allowed us to actually bring it down to, four, uh, to 49 pound in cost, which is really great of them. Um, so, again, make sure you kind of uh, make use of the offer that we've got. Right, back to today. What are we doing? Well, um, we've chosen two topics again, but we're live for questions. So uh, please get them into Debbie uh, as soon as you can. Uh, today's uh, sessions are uh, closing the sale and maximizing the sale. Just, just to give you a recap um, or a, head, a heads up um, of how we're finishing the tour, in fact, um, we're going to be recapping on image selection, um, the software to use and how to use it, of course, uh, post-session pre-selling. That's the absolutely essential skill, um, one of the essential skills, I should say, for the day. We're talking about pricing and products. Uh, we're talking about the best of the best. To, we'll, we'll show you how to sell more large images for the wall naturally to the client without feeling like you're for uh, you're forcing them to buy we're, we're not into hard selling at all um, addictions and add-ons which sounds wrong but it's basically how to maximize the sale even more and then we're looking at how we kind of close the sale uh, which we're going to touch on a little bit today and we're also going to finish off with the white rabbit when we're actually on tour so those are just some of the topics that we've been doing i've already actually posted the full itinerary now over on the Mark Levin site of Times and everything else within things really. So um, today, closing the sale, what's it about? Well, um, the funny thing is that if you kind of start to analyze people outside of the photography in industry, specifically salesmen, I would say that if you want to learn a lot about closing the sale, you go and buy or pretend to buy a new sofa. Um, and so... Uh, the whole point of this, it's just actually to see how a salesman interacts with, with you and uh, to see how pushed they are. And it's a good idea because if you go to a few of the industrial areas where there's two or three different um, sofa kind of shops around, um, it's a good idea to actually go through them and actually see the different styles of the way that the salespeople are doing it. Because at the end of the day, they're there on commission to make a sale whether they admit it or not, okay? The whole point is to make sure that they're gonna make some money from you and it's knowing how you get around to actually making that sale happen to begin with. So let's go through the scenario now. We've taken the client through a little bit of a journey and we talked about the structure of the viewing before, but we've taken them through the journey, uh, the journey of the slideshow, big images up on the screen. We're talking about then actually narrow them down, the best of the best. And now we're actually getting to how do we actually start to really nail the client into saying, yes, that's the one I want. And this is probably where most photographers who are trying to sell their own work fall down in the early years. Um, I always say that it's probably the first 500 clients um, that you're gonna need going through you before you basically un understand fully your experience and how to kind of uh, nail everything within your business with it. It might be the first 100 clients, you're kind of on a massive learning curve, and probably in those first 100 clients, you're going to get a lot of low or a lot of no sales. And one of the things that um, I'm proving within my experience group is that as long as you go in there fully prepared, knowing exactly what you're going to do, and basically... Uh, making sure that the client knows they're there to buy as well, then 
basically you kind of guarantee that the client is going to be buying so something and if the pricing structure is correct as well that we've talked about in past sessions um, then you know they're actually ready to buy they're actually coming in ready to buy how do we get them to close the sale well the first things first um, you must never be afraid to ask is that size okay then um, is this the portrait we're going for then? Is this the collection we're going for? Ask the question. That's what a salesperson does. So uh, many, many years ago, going back to the good old days of uh, us doing loads and loads of weddings, one of the things that uh, I learned in the early years was to say to the bride and groom, the prospective bride and groom, so um, are you booking your wedding day with us? So that was it. You know, we've kind of had a chat. It's probably gone on for 30 minutes, 45 minutes. The last thing I want them to do is leave us and go somewhere else without making a decision. So making that decision and Debbie trained all her team as well. Whoever was actually coming across clients was actually knowing that they've got to ask that big question. So would you like to book us? That's it. Um, it's always good as well with the things like weddings. If you've got a crossover of clients, uh, why? Because basically, um, if another couple is coming in soon uh, and you know they are coming in, uh, then at least you can use that as a bit of an excuse. They don't need to know it's not the same date as theirs or whatever it be, but you need some reason to close the sale. And that's the key thing with it. So one of the things um, that we talk about is the two tier price list. And the two tier price list always allows you to maximize the sale on the day and close the sale on the day. If you allow the client to just go away with proofs or online viewing or whatever it is, you're going to find yourself really not being able to actually uh, get the client to make a decision. If for some reason you've got to do online sales, try and do a face to face sales session like you're kind of. I'm doing with you now as such really um, but just trying to encourage them to actually come online uh, to actually kind of view the photographs with you together perhaps you can use the like of Skype or something like that to be able to do it with and talk them through the images but closing the sale is the absolutely essential thing so in the sale there's a, stru a structure to, clo uh, to closing it it doesn't mean that you've got to actually close the maximum of the whole sale straight at the beginning it means at least you've got to get them to make a decision on the first thing that they're buying that is the first stage of the close uh, the closing of the sale okay once they've decided on what they're going to buy first then we can start to discuss more things so in other words if we're looking over my left shoulder here and we've talked about the um, kaleidoscope installation here as an exam example if a client has gone for say the 20 inch of the girls together okay and they said that's the size yep blah 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 we're not talking about framing styles or anything else at this point Rebecca, but we keep it as simple as we can we're only talking about image and size the client wants to know cost that's the only thing that we're talking uh, we're talking about with them really and they're here they're going you know am i buying on price or am i buying on size that's the first thing that you really need to understand from when they start bringing you down and down and down is that probably they're actually buying on size instead of price and that's uh, one of the things that we're going to talk about a little bit more in depth when we're on tour so once they've said like the 20 inch then we've actually got you know three or four other images left in the collection perhaps or the images that they've uh, chosen down to and this is a, per a perfect example of the three girls okay so they've got uh, another one of the two girls that they love laughing uh, uh, to each other and then they've got a close-up of each of the girls so straight away before we jumped into an installation we would always recommend that you're going through the process of trying to sell those images as well in a larger size so this is where the kind of the price list and the collections really does come into its own so i just don't want to divert straight to that um, i've seen so many photographers over the past 10 years get hooked on selling multiple images within the same frame let's give you a, an example of that for a minute so um, if i just head across and we go to kaleidoscope for one second And uh, Kaleidoscope, by the way, and Loxley's and 3XM uh, solutions are going to be on tour with us. So it's a good chance for you to come and actually have a chat with them as well and see the products full on. So if we just click into layouts for a minute, um, I've basically seen the almost destruction of my industry 
because of the layouts. And this isn't Kaleidoscope's fault, this is photographers throughout the land. And the reason why I say it's been the destruction of our industry is that basically it's got photographers hooked into selling multiple images into the same frame instead of trying to sell them lots of images for the wall. Now, if you think about it, a client is really only going to come in and spend once every eight, 18 months to three years. So when we're looking at the investment into photography, it's not an invest, investment that is now, but it's an investment that theoretically it's going to be on, on the wall for perhaps 10 years plus. But in fact, the next time they're going to be buying something is around about two to three years time. So those are the kind of little things we need to make sure. So you can see the difference now if you view in on screen, the uh, uh, the kind of the aperture compared to um, uh, mul uh, multiple images in exactly the same way. If we head over to Loxley's and we start to look at the frame, uh, framing with them, and let's just go down to the Heritage. Oh, it's not a desk. I want wall products frame, uh, framing mark, Heritage big. Um, but when we start to actually uh, see the mounts and the layouts in exactly the same way here, this is where I feel so many photographers have fallen down into the rabbit hole, as it were, thinking that it's easy sale because they can put lots of images into the frame. Excuse me. <coughs> um, and as Alan Sugar says, just because it's cheap doesn't make you a good salesman. Funny enough, I was speaking to a photographer recently, not a part of my experience group, and I was chatting with them and they, you know, I was asking them how's business going and everything else with it. And they said, oh, you know, it's not too bad at all. And I said, oh, what's your, uh, your average running at present? And they said, oh, it's 400 pounds. They, they literally flicked that figure off their tongue straight away with it. I was like, OK, well, that's not a bad little average that is for a small little studio, one man band, blah, blah, blah. I said, well, brilliant. OK, so how, how many sessions are you doing a week? And they said, oh, uh, doing um, around about four sessions a week as a normal, which basically is a part time biz a business, in my opinion. But let's not get picky on that. Uh, they're doing four. Uh, OK, right. Right. So um, uh, and they said, oh, I've just had my actual best month ever. I've done four thousand pounds. It was like, well, instantly my head goes, of course. Well, if first, first of all, they impressed the hell out of me because they knew their average. And an average, remember, is the total amount of sessions divided by the total amount of sales. So if they said that they were doing four sessions per week and they were av av averaging 400 pounds per that's remember that's what they said not me so that that would basically give us um 1600 pounds per week and if we times that by uh four then it basically would give us a total of 6400 pounds per month well obviously they basically fooling themselves and a little bit of a false sense of security. And this is where we see in the businesses kind of fall apart. When you start to see an average done, you've got to look at um, what the true average is to be able to quote that. Otherwise, you'll never know how, how, how the business is actually tracking itself and things. So if let's say that they were doing the um, four per week and they just had, let's, let's say that they had the best month ever uh, at four grand. So we just instantly divide that by four. Okay, so that's our thousand pound. Um, well, we know if they're doing four per week, then that's an average of 250, not 400 pounds. That's a massive difference there within the business. So what you've got to know is obviously what your kind of true av averages are. And one of the things that I think this kind of system does is what it does, it basically gets you into the rhythm of thinking that a client is buying a lot, but in fact, they're buying something with lots of images and they're not maximizing or they're not helping you to maximize your sale. So a lot of the things that we're going to be doing on tour is talking about how we're going to close the sale, not on a cheap product, but on a product that is well priced and not just on one product, but on multiple products as well. OK, so we're not just going to be talking about an easy way at all. We're going to show you how, you know, Debbie and her team and myself over the, over the years have, have absolutely found the right sales script, the right selling kind of um, elements that allow the client to buy without feeling like it's being pushed down their throats. Debbie, any questions?
Yeah, there are one or two. Whilst you're on that subject of the mixed frame sizes, um, Paul is asking, is sizing a problem with such frames? Um, is sizing a problem with the frames? It's not so much the uh, the physical size of the image in a frame by any means. It's basically how we're put in um, multiple images within the same frame. So, OK, um, the biggest image I've got actually here in the webinar room is a 20 inch square there. OK, and that's in a 30 inch glass. Um, so you can imagine if we put a multiple images within there, you would probably be looking at something like five, six by fours. So three across the bottom, six, 12, 18, probably a little bit bigger, seven, 14, 21. So seven in inches. Uh, with five high and then actually a few running up the vertical as well. It, it just starts to minimize the big image. And I hear so many photographers saying, oh, how do I find that per uh, the perfect client? How do I get them to buy big images? The first thing is understand how to actually sell your photography to them and sell them products that are both affordable for you to sell so you can maximize your profit. That is the key thing. Did that answer that question, you think, Debbie? Yeah, I think so. I've got a couple of other good ones coming through here. Um, somebody's also, will there not always be a lag between taking the images and a client actually paying for the same? So cash flow must be extremely important. Obviously, that's down to the sales side, isn't it? Yeah. Um, well, basically, we would encourage you to do the same uh, in-person per, in sales, okay, within two weeks of the actual session itself. All right. So... Basically, a photographer who can do five sessions on a Saturday, let's say, can then actually structure the viewings through the evenings during the course of the week. Yeah. If you can do 10 sessions across a Saturday and a, sun, a, su a Sunday, it basically means that you're doing <clears throat> two or three sessions per day during the course of the week. So um, the cash flow is not a bad thing because you're obviously into the rhythm. I, I would say that a lot of photographers fall down when they're one person bus businesses when they go on holiday because um, they're going away and it's not so much the cash flow that they're going to lose out, out on because they'll be coming back to viewing straight away. But what they'll be coming back to is very few or no sessions actually in the diary that have been booked in whilst, whilst they're away and things really. And those are some of the things that we actually tackle within the experience group, showing you how to actually ma maximize that. But no, um, as far as the, um, the cash flow is concerned, everything is in a structured way with it. Thank you. Uh, another question. Uh, somebody say, many of my clients are requesting only digital files nowadays. How does it fit with your sales plan? <laughs> Besides not have those clients. Uh, no, no, not at all. Um, uh, they're, they're actually, they don't want digital. They, want di they don't want digital at all, in fact. Okay, and I will absolutely guarantee demonstrate that to you on tour. Sneaky. Sneaky, I know. <laughs> okay. Um, at what point would you establish what a client's budget is? That's a good one. Uh, we never want to know the budget, in fact. If you, uh, um, so if a client comes in to spend £200, let's say, a salesperson in the room will know they can get them to four or five. That's the key thing. But as soon as you start to um, find out what their budget is, you're basically going to start to actually limit your sale no matter what with it. And again, these are the things that we're talking about on tour and things. We, we touched on them a little bit in some of the pre-sessions of these. You'll have to recap up and watch them again. Uh, but basically, um, you are you should never know a budget. You should never know a budget because as soon as you know a budget, you know basically where you're going to stop and you won't go beyond the sale. Sorry, I was nodding on that one then. <laughs> The amount of photographers I speak to on that one alone. Um, we know, Debbie and I know, okay, that if somebody comes in with, say, 500 quid to spend, they're going to spend a grand. It all yeah, is yeah. a part of the, val of the value chain and the, stru uh, the structure. We talked a little bit about last session, but the full structure with it, when we do it on tour, you'll understand why it all, all fit, fits together. And the, um, uh, the PSPS will absolutely you'll get it you'll absolutely get it and you'll see how difference i mean it's quite funny some of you know that I, I run the experience group of photographers they're an independent collection of photographers throughout the uk and ireland we're just under nine 
90 photographers uh, um, at present. Please feel free to actually get in touch if you're interested. We're growing the experience at a rapid level. But um, it was funny because we did a two day sales session with them back in May. And one of the guys who actually came on it, 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 for him, it was basically, oh, my God, you know, they're coming in with this. People don't want to buy. OK, they want to go away with a freebie and everything else with it. And it was so funny that just a couple of days ago, it might even been yesterday, in fact, uh, he, po he, po he posted um, something like, I'm fed up of these 750 pound sales. When am I going to hit my grand? <laughs> and it was so funny. It was kind of. What a difference uh, a day makes, never, never mind a couple of months kind of thing with it and things really. And it's all about maximizing the sale from the clients at hand. Um, I'm not sure if I've gone off piece there a little bit, Debbie, but uh, you know what I'm on about. But it's great yeah, for no. us. We, uh, we see such a, a magnificent change in, in, in most of these photographers who join the experience so fast, you just wouldn't believe, uh, believe it. Anyway, go, Deb. Uh, another one. Uh, my clients struggle to decide on the images they want there and then at the viewing session. Would you aim to get them to just decide on a package first? No. Is that personal per, uh, person able to come on tour? Can you ask the question? Uh, Laura, can you message me back, please? Fingers crossed she'll send another one. She's still online, so yeah. I, I'm, I'm... hopefully she will. You, you know what we've got covered, Debbie. Laura, this exactly. will absolutely, the tour will nail it. Uh, in one day, I promise you, it will change your business. Guaranteed in er everything that you're doing as far as the in-person sales is concerned. It, couldn't, it could also change the business in many other, other ways. Uh, remember, really, what I'm doing this tour for is to actually attract in more people to the experience, to show you what I can do for you in a day. If I can do that in a day, imagine what I can do with a year within experience and things, really. And very few people leave experience. Fingers crossed, anyway. Uh, and we're into our end of our third year now. And, and as I said, it, it really does pay off. Go on, Debbie. Anything else there? Uh, oh, a couple of people are asking, do we plan on taking it up to Scotland? Do you know what? We only mentioned it first thing this morning, Debbie, didn't you? Oh, didn't yeah. I? Um, there's a possibility, a possibility um, that I'm just looking on my online diary now, um, that if I can get the Loxley's room, I might be able to do it. Do you remember what day it was? Uh, no, and I haven't got a diary in front of me. Um, I'm at your desk. I'm just looking. Sorry. Hang on a second. Sorry. Whilst you're looking through there, are you going to put the link for the um, tour on later? Yeah, I'll do it again now. It could be yeah. the 10th of October, but I haven't even asked Lockleys about it yet. So if you're interested and you're in Scotland, let us know as soon as you can, and I'll try and actually do it. There's a possibility I'm there for a day. Anything else, Deb? Great. Uh so you've answered Laura's um, and another question's come through. Uh, you mentioned a white rabbit in a previous session. What is it? OK, uh, 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 I can't tell you. If you've been on tour with me before, we've always discussed yeah. white rabbits. All right. Um, but it's not that I'm it's just one of my things. OK, I introduced the concept of the white rabbit to photography and sales. Uh, some 20 odd years ago and it's my little thing and I don't openly talk about it actually on the mic but if you come into a, a room environment I mean if you'd been on the big photo uh, last year a free a free tour I would have talked about the white rabbit if you've been on monkey business tours with me in the past I would have talked about it if you were with the um, uh, headshot tour with us in uh, June then I would have talked about it again I promise it's nothing that is new to the sales room tour but I, it absolutely does make a maximum a difference to the uh, no or the low sale client. I'll leave it as that. OK. OK, yeah, there's a few people coming through saying, yes, they'd be really interested in you go into that area. Um, can you send that link again for the tour for next week, please? I've just done it in, in the chat panel now. In the OK, if you all have a look, I've got a couple of people asking if you can look in your chat box, then you'll be able to see it and that will take you directly to the website then where you'll obviously be able to book it. Bro. Any, OK, any issues? Go on. Um, another question here for me. Um, how do I choose the right products for my photography? 
Oh, do you know what? That lead that leads us per, uh, perfectly on to maximizing the sale. Yeah. Um, so let's um, we talked about um, kaleidoscope and kind of looking at things. And in the um, previous sessions that we've been looking at the installations like that's actually behind me here. OK, uh, we've talked about Loxley's and uh, uh, kind of variety. We talked about 3XM and their products as far as the signature range that I use. Let me just click quickly click off to them for you. So we talked about the uh, products and the, sig uh, the signature range. Um, uh in the past and things really cool there we go so uh, again it's really down to um the the kind of thing that you 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 want all right but you've got to start to really bring everything together i'm just going to go over to loxley's for a minute um and we're going to look at the different kind of products from it so the first thing that i would do is always pay attention to run in special off offers so the, champ, the champion wall products are absolutely a, a great idea of Loxley's and one that I would encourage any Loxley's client to actually make use of. Um, but I'd obviously have to choose the right pro product to ensure that um, it was right for my, biz my business. Now, funny enough, they introduced a, third, a 30 by 20 this year, and I'm absolutely convinced that that was inspired by the experience group because we had our own third 30 inch champion pro products, and I'm sure they saw how much that we were selling in the bigger size. So don't only think about what is large for the wall, but also look at presentation products as well within things. Last month, uh, last week, we talked about Al albums of course um, but one of the other things like we were talking about with 3xm is the uh, likes of the album and uh, usb here so um, adding all these little bits in will really make a difference to you guaranteed um, and this is an al an album compared to the print box that we do with 3xm but even if we went to uh, the uh, print box products here where they're actually putting uh, prints into the box instead of an album in there. This is another one. Now, I actually prefer the uh, 3XM product compared to this one. That's a personal thing. But remember, I spend money with, with all three of the clients that we're kind of talking about today. It's just down to what is correct for you and so on with it. Um, one of the great things about adding in is that a generation today is not used to print. And so by selling a box that we can add in prints in and into it is a perfect way for us to actually keep the client coming back to us or keep the client adding in towards their photography, especially if we uh, make it special to them that they come back forever. But we'll talk about that, I hope, on another session anyway. So adding in the different products, even things like you know mugs and coasters you might think that this is really tacky fi in it but when you're talking around father's day and kind of special events like mother's day why not include include something that they actually do want and then perhaps that's why they want to buy the uh, the digital files from you is because they actually want to go out and actually buy their own <clears throat> <clears throat> the amount of clients that once we began to show them um iphone cover excuse me Once we began to show them covers for phones, they were going ballistic about it and go, oh, can we actually get that from our wedding as well? Was, well, of course you can. It doesn't mean they have to exist on a price list to show everything, but all these little things add up. So never be afraid to kind of put a little bit of a collection of giftware amongst everything together, a bit of its own kind of product table and things really. Right, we've got a couple of minutes to go. Deb, anything else that you want us to cover? Uh, there's just one year. Somebody's just saying they're selling the USB and album box. Do you think 695 is a reasonable sale price for it? Um, I think it's it's not a bad sales price at all. If you look at the album USB, it's coming in. If you're having it with your uh, engraving on there as well, it's probably getting you about 120 quid. Uh, I think that's about right. I, I do apologize because we get special dis uh, discounts with an experience group. Yeah, um, but I think it's. £99 plus VAT and delivery. So let's say that's £130, an extra tenner for the engraving, 140 So it's coming in sub 150 as such. So if you're a normal photographer, that, that pricing would be around about the 650 level. If you're an entrepreneur, 
um, photographer Pricelin, then it would be closer to the nine hundred pounds. So it's really down to you. But yeah, you 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 you're on the right tracks there. Okay, uh, that's it on the main questions coming through. Brilliant. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. I hope you've um, uh, enjoyed uh, uh, one of these kind of sales sessions. Um, but uh, again, remember, the key point for me is that you're going to be coming along to us actually on the sales room tour. So if you don't know where that is, it's basically just going on to the markflegorn.com site forward slash sales dash room and you'll get there. If in doubt at all, just go to the Photographer Academy site, click onto the Mark Cleghorn logo, click off to that, it'll bring you onto here, click onto training, onto sales room, and then you're there. So just to recap on what we're gonna be doing, um, we're gonna be looking at maximizing post-session pre-selling. We're gonna be setting up the perfect viewing room, selling with more confidence, dealing with objections to purchase, we're looking at to uh, the bright price for the products and how to actually select uh, select them. Uh, we're looking at image selection for the viewings and making sure we're showing and enhancing the images in the right way. We're going to be doing live sales sessions and we're going to be doing the difficult ones as well as the easy ones, I promise you. We're going to be looking at how we sell collections. We're going to be looking at how we handle uh, the promotional kind of uh, free offer. And then we're going to be looking at, of course, the negative selling. We're going to spend quite a lot of time on that and how to actually make sure you turn a negative into a positive sales. And uh, again, what we're doing, we're also including light lunch and refreshments within that for the day. Uh, we're going to also include the session notes. And we've got a little bit of a recap video, which will be posted out uh, following the tour as well. Then things really, And all that for 49 quid. So uh, fingers crossed, we're going to see you all there. If you're bringing somebody else in from the same studio, um, then it's 40, it's a four a forty pound cost for the second person, third or fourth from them. So uh, again, if you just um, if if you're doing it on a phone, scroll right down to the bottom. Then you actually see your uh, your, dis, uh, your discounted kind of elements. But if you just go down here to begin with, so the first thing that you would do is choose the area that you're going to be in. So if it's Manchester, you'd obviously choose your uh, uh, second ticket. Or if you haven't booked the one first, of course, you go and book in the discounted ticket first of all. Remember that this tour should have been a lot more money, but um, 3XM, Loxley's and uh, uh, Kaleid a Kaleidoscope have, spon have sponsored the event now to actually bring a lot down in price. So it's great that we can actually get more of you involved. Come along, we'll see you on tour, and I promise you it's gonna change your business and the way that you sell your in-person sales. Thanks everybody, take care now, bye-bye.